All right, gang. Um, what is this? Year six of the Crossroads? Um, is it got to be the first time all four teams are ranked? Alan, is that true? Yes. First that time? Correct, yeah. It's funny, I was talking to B.J. Beecham yesterday, and we were talking about all four teams are ranked. He said, Coach, remember my freshman year, none of the four teams made the NCAA tournament. Well, remember, it was Black Monday after Selection Sunday that year. Um, you know, we uh, play a heck of a program. You know, got a lot of respect for Matt Painter and what he's done with that program. They're always going to guard the heck out of you. You know, they built the program on really solid half-court man-to-man defense. And um, lately, they've been huge with that front line that kind of wears you down. I think the thing that scares the heck out of you is they've got the guys that can score around the bucket in Hawes and Swanigan, but then they've got guys shooting over 40%. They are, as a team, shooting over 40% from the three-point line. So, you know, you, you can't help too much or you get lit up from the three-point line. Um, but I think it's a, yeah, again, it's a great matchup. It's a great day of basketball in Indy. You, you guys have always been really good in bounce back mode, but you don't have a blueprint for bounce back mode in December. How do you, how do you go about bouncing back from what happened on Saturday and being good this Saturday? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I think that'll come more from our group and our leadership. You know, I, I don't think I have to talk a lot about it. I mean, we we're really disappointed we didn't win Saturday. We felt we matched up great and. It's been, it was a hard one to get over because it was a great opportunity that we missed on. Um, but I think, um, you know, the, our captains and our older guys, you know, just watching them yesterday and hearing them talk, you know, they're ready to play again against another potential, you know, great win uh, that would be on your resume. How would you assess where V.J. Beecham's game is at as far as confidence, as far as really s starting faster maybe? Yeah, I, I think for him, you know, V.J. is a guy that's probably going to be overanalyzed, you know, the whole year. Um, you know, V.J. is a guy that has to play longer minutes, and he's kind of a guy that all of a sudden can strike. You know, one of the reasons you can keep him in there longer now, maybe if he isn't making shots, is because he's defending better. You know, he did a pretty good job on Jenkins. You know, he took Jenkins off the arc, and he's rebounded better, and he's been better with the ball. So you can ride him longer because, you know, he's not killing you on that end of the floor. And, you know, at any time, like, he had unbelievably clean looks the other day. You know, I mean, you got, it's almost like we got to live with it. We're going to live with it. And I think for him, I don't overanalyze stuff with him either. You know, it's like, you know, let's get back and be ready to go on Saturday. But, uh, you know, he's kind of an ebb and flow guy. And that's who he is. And we want to ride it. And hopefully we get um, what would flow be good and ebb be bad. We want to get flow more, more than flow. ebb. Can we get flow more than ebb enough to get in the NCAA tournament? I'll take that. How does, I'm sorry, Tom, go ahead. What, what is it about him now that – he he won't overanalyze. I gotta make a shot, or I gotta get yeah. my points. Or, or maturity. He's, he's just overall maturity. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, he he. I think as a young player, it it, it was more getting his psyche right. I don't have to spend any time with him. I'm not gonna, you know, guard, rebound, cut. I, one of the things he's doing is moving without the ball very well. He's helping our offense by cutting and moving more. Um, and he got some stuff around the bucket. That's the only place he scored, but at least he was moving. He's going to get looks, you know. I, I don't know if you want to be so tunnel vision in what do we do to get B.J. going. You, you know, we're, we're kind of a play, and we have a lot of different ways of scoring, and every now and then here's a set for V. Here's something for Bonzi. Here's something for Matt. Here's something for Steve. But I think you can really maybe mess your group up by saying, what do we do for VJ? He's going to play long minutes, and eventually he's going to get his shots and his looks. Other than maybe starting with Mark, get, get Martin Gavin a look. You've never been a program that says, let's get this guy a look or that guy a look or yeah. get that guy. It, it all just comes in the flow, right? Yeah, it really has been kind of a flow kind of thing. I mean, it's we, we probably do more for Bonzi, trying to move him around. You know, we post him some, then we get him at you know balls. We get him at the elbow. We've moved him around. But it, it, our motion is our motion, and you can't argue with our numbers. You know, our numbers and our efficiency say play, flow, and, and don't force anything. The great thing about VJ is he doesn't – he's not forcing stuff to get himself going. Um, you know, uh, 
and, and, and he knows he's going to be in there long enough where it's going to come around to him. How does he handle those ups and downs? What's his? What's I I think I think he kind of smiles now. These these uh, you know these last two years, he kind of laughs it off like, yeah, man, can you believe those looks? That one, two of those were halfway down, coach. Whereas I think as a freshman and sophomore, like a lot of young guys. You, you know, I had to do more work with him. Like, hey, you're gonna be fine, man. You're you're still starting, and don't look over your shoulder. I'm not taking you he out. He knows that now. He yeah, he's he's he's, a, just, he's in that position now. He's he's a key guy. How do you balance, you know, going big to match Purdue and or making them defend you smaller? Well, it, it you know it, it, it's it's interesting. You know, again, and and you know it. it probably doesn't matter who we're playing. When are we downshifting? When are we not? When is it effective? I don't want to overanalyze how big they are and all of a sudden we just have to play big the whole game. Um, you know, I still want us to get a feel. And as a matter of fact, you know, the two bigs probably only play together half a game down there, you know, and then they downshift a little bit to Edwards and he's a stretch four and they've been really good, you know, playing like that too. So. Uh, you know, it's it's a give and take and flow thing. And Rex comes in. Is he in for a big? We've done that a lot. And uh, that lineup, when Rex is in for Martin, has finished a lot of games for us and played well. As long as we can rebound the ball. You know, we we did not rebound the ball well enough to win with a smaller lineup on Saturday. And I think my big challenge in practice the next two days is to challenge really everybody but our front line guys you know if bon, you know, bonds uh marty torres johnny mooney we got to get him some reps because body big bodies may be needed we got to get can, can we can we rebound with them you know we were scared before the colorado game of course we hadn't made any money yet you know we know we're not good we were and we blocked out we were attention to detail and bonds he just controlled the board I need him back in that mode uh, on Saturday, and maybe every night, kind of junkyard dogish kind of mode. You're getting more from guys like BJ and Steve on the defensive glass this year, but especially against a team like Purdue with that size, how important is it for them to get going yeah. with Bonzi? Yeah, very much so. Like you know, BJ and Steve, you know, Rex rebounds for us. Um, you know, it, it has to be team rebounding and team stuff. That that's why I love the Colorado performance. Our team, we we really we blocked out as a group. We were really attention to detail because we were scared to death. You know, I, I painted Colorado as being the best rebounding team in the history of basketball, and and uh, I don't think I have to paint Purdue that way because our guys know about the front line stuff that's going to pound on them. And how do you emphasize that in practice? How do you teach that to guys who might not be? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's something we've reinforced from, from early in the year. You know, one of the things that this team thought would be a weakness, I didn't bring it up. I asked them in one of our group sessions, what do you worry about? What are you concerned about? And, and I think, you know, 80% was defensive rebounding coach, you know. We didn't know who we were going to be. Zach August, the double-double guy, left. And how are we going to rebound the ball? So I think Steve and BJ automatically kicked into, I got to do that more. And then, and then, you know, I've reinforced it when they've had five rebounds, seven rebounds, you know, and gotten in there. Steve's had a couple great rebounding games. But uh, they know it's important for us to be successful, those two rebounding. And after a loss like Saturday, do you have a guy in practice? Is Bonzi maybe a guy who – who gets on guys? Who motivates guys after something like that? Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't think anybody was getting on anybody. You know, I, I, I think uh, first we didn't do anything until yesterday. I mean, okay. we we didn't we didn't get back together till yesterday. And what we did yesterday was scrimmage because I just wanted us to run and play. We were so busy, and and it, you know, I don't think it was a thing where we're challenging manhood. I think accept responsibility uh, individually, collectively for what we can do better. You know, we we'll point that out more today. Uh, in some of our stuff, but it's more of, you know, we can do that better and more maybe a teaching atmosphere uh, than, you know, challenging atmosphere. Mike, you touched on all four teams being ranked, but how much does that add? It's a great, great weekend. Yeah, Ange, it's a great day of hoops. You know, it's always been a great event. Indy just knows how to do basketball and knows how to do sports. I love the Final Four there. 
It's a great basketball town. This The thing has been sold out every year. But with the four teams ranked and there's some buzz about them, I just think it adds to be a great afternoon of basketball. It's, the, you know, it's, it's been a neat event for us to be part of, and um, we love it. The timing of it is really good. And, um, you know, our fan, I think our fans now over time put this on the calendar. You know, you hear people in town, I'll be, I'm going down, I'm heading down. They make it a weekend in Indy. And then I, over the years, some people have mentioned, oh, should they make a bigger ad in Indiana State of Alpo? Maybe not necessarily against the big right. four, but do you think it's worth Well, you know, it's probably, could you add a third game in there, you mean? Yeah, I mean, you could be playing, of course, we play at two. They'd have to start a little bit earlier because TV is going to probably always put us in those afternoon slots. It'd probably be something to think about. I wonder if they've ever talked about it. I, I, I would certainly be open to that. Um, you know, again, it's pretty darn powerful right now, and uh, tickets are hard to come by, which is why it's been a great idea and great event. Alan put out the tweet earlier that it's the first time that both Notre Dame and Purdue have ever both been ranked when they're playing each other. Really? I didn't know that. How insane is that? That is crazy. Well, you know, again, the other thing is that we haven't played them much. You know, what was it? This is the fourth time since 66? Third time. Third time. Yeah. Well, this will be the fourth This will be the fourth time since 1966. Um, but that is, that is an amazing stat. But, uh, yeah, I have a lot of respect for their program. You know, Matt is a good friend. We're on the NABC board together. Um, he's just done a heck of a job with their program. And they do what they do. You know, it's, it's, it's we do what we do. They do what they do. They have an identity, and they've been really consistent with it. They haven't won a crossroads game yet. No, I, have they not won any? No. Won five. I thought they got one last year. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh man, that's interesting. <laughs> John, want to hear that? That is interesting. God darn. Oh boy. Uh, well, I'm glad that we've been pretty good down there. It's been a, it's been a, you know, when you're trying to recruit this state like we do, it's it's good to be in this thing. And then it's good to play well because all the top kids are at the game and with their families, they all go to that game. So, you know, style of play is on, you know, on stage for in-state kids. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, it's all right. I, I would have probably thought about it tonight and then not slept. <laughs> Coach, at the beginning of the year, you talked about how Ryan and Ryan are going to have, you're kind of more interested in seeing how they're, they develop and grow through 10 games. What have they been like? What's their... Kind of yeah, Matt Ryan and um, or, sorry, uh, Ryan Ayers and Ryan Humphrey. Oh, Ryan Ayers and Ryan Humphrey. Yeah. Um, they've been great. Uh, you know, they they have great energy. Um, the important stuff that they're doing is connecting with our guys, um, being an unbelievable role model and support system for our guys. Because it wasn't that long ago they were doing what our guys were doing played for me, they can interpret stuff that maybe I'm doing during a season that maybe a young player doesn't understand that they went through. Um, and, and they've been great with our individual instruction. And, you know, again, I, you know, we lost four NBA players over the last two years, and we lost two pretty darn good assistants. And I like the fact that we've been able to kind of keep purring, so to speak, in our system. And, but I think it's their familiarity uh, with things and their uh, youthful energy. Um, sometimes they're a little, they get a little excited in games, but that's okay. You know, they're young guys, and um, they're really proud to be back here. You said that I don't think last year. Go ahead, Lee. Uh, you said that before the Colorado game that you kind of had to scare them a little bit. Is there anything that after a loss maybe you have to do to kind of? Not really. I don't think so. You know, I, I don't. Not at this point. You know, uh, I, I think. You know, who knows what will happen come ACC season, because we will take some punches. Um, you know, I, I have, there, this has been a really steady, stable, focused group. And so, you know, they're their, they're their own worst critics when they don't do well. And so, you know, I think it's more me teaching, pointing out, I I instead of, you know, challenging manhood. At least right now, will it come to that? I'm ready to do that too if my role changes. Thank you, thanks, Alan. Um, Fluger last year, you kind of you, you wanted him in there playing defense and kind of facilitating or, or keeping the offense rolling. But I mean, he hasn't committed a turnover this year. He's yeah. About 20 assists. He's hitting threes. 
Did you see this coming in the preseason? Yeah, in the summer, you know, one of the things I've always talked about, his freshman summer, he threw the ball away more than anybody I've ever seen. And then he gets so down on himself, you know, he, he would get emotional when he makes mistakes. <clears throat> and he, and he, he was playing too fast, like a lot of young guys. And I think he's really learned to be, and he's actually said it, he said, I learned to be a better basketball player here last year. Change in pace. <clears throat> what he's doing, because he's got the ball in his hands, that stat is amazing. I mean, it's really amazing, because he's touching the thing a lot. He's making some ball screen decisions. We like him driving into gaps and making plays. You're just going to probably turn it over a couple times. So that's amazing. And then you add what T.J. Gibbs does as far as his assist to turnover. You come off the bench with two guys that are just really good with the ball and give you a great toughness. They can guard and, and they can drive. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, the knock on him was he couldn't shoot. You know, everybody said out west, hey, heck of a player, he's you know, not going to make a shot for you. Well, you know, he's got a lot of pride. He worked on it. What he's doing is he's taking good ones for the most part. He's not a high-volume three-point shooter, but we want him to take that after some great movement. You had Chris Quinn as a freshman. Now, he had one of these runs where he didn't Yeah, this turnovers. one's longer, though, right? Yes. Yeah. And you had you had to tell him, go commit some turnovers. Yeah. I need you to create more. Drive it. You, you feel he, good about Rex? He was safer than Rex. He was too safe, so I had to get on him. Rex can be a little reckless, but borderline good stuff. Like he his puts his head down and drives it and tries to make plays. And he, he's an attack guy, so <coughs> I don't have to tell him to attack anymore. <laughs> Mike, is you know going big to match them or them downshifting to you, is that the ultimate game within a game, like a game yeah. of chicken between the two guys? Yeah, I think, it, I think it really is where you're trying to figure out. I think we both will be trying to figure out and Villanova was doing it a little bit, you know, the other day. It's, it's, you know, when are you, when have you downshifted, and are you, are you, are you getting offensive efficiency, and are you able to rebound the ball? You know, when we can rebound, when, when we're a little smaller. God, can we run? We can get down the floor, and that's been a great weapon for us. But we got to get it first. So are we in there to get it now? Playing post defense and taking the pounding in the post. Now, that can't be Bonzi the whole game. You know, that's why Martin Gavin has really helped our defense. He plays that, – that stat doesn't show up for Marty, but he gives us – we're better defensively when he's in the game. He anchors the post, and he's great showing on ball screens. He's very consistent in his ball screen to defense and positioning, and, and that's helped us. Torres is good in that department. And, you know, we got to keep Mooney and, and, and Burns probably ready to go too – because it could, you, know, you may lose some guys in a game like this. It could be so physical as far as foul trouble, fouls. Austin situation, was that just an isolated incident? I mean, is he The heart situation? Yeah. yeah, really was. He's, uh, knock on wood, he's been good, cleared, tested. I think they felt maybe, he, he took some of those energy drinks, and, and I think that may have revved it a little bit. He's an anxious guy anyways, <laughs> and I think that revved it. So I think he's going easy on the energy drinks game day. He's got enough natural energy. Right. Mike, a couple weeks from ACC play, do you have a better idea of maybe where you fit? Have you been keeping an eye on kind of where the, the lay of the land is? Yeah, I, I hope we fit. I just hope I hope we get 10 bids. You know, I, I don't know if I told you this story. I was at media day and John Swafford the night before said, well, how's your team going to be, Mike? I said, if we get nine or 10 bids, I think I'm going to have a really good team. If we get six bids, I, I, I'm not sure. I'll just be honest with you. Obviously, we have the look of a, a deep bid league. Um, I'm interested to watch NC State tonight because the Turkish kid is back. Um, and I've watched a bunch of them. It, it's what we thought is happening. The depth is amazing. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do as much as we can in the non-league. <laughs> so we maybe have some padding when the big punches come because it's going to be an adventure when we get into it. And we obviously start off, you know, at Pitt, Louisville at home. I mean, it's, it's – uh, but it's going to be great to play. And I think it's uh, – I, again, I think it's the deepest league and it's going to be a hard thing to maneuver. But, I, you know, I like our, you know, our maturity and our stability and our focus, I hope, can help us through that. You have a pretty intelligent team. I mean, when you talk about very much steady, so. stable, focused, yeah, I mean, yeah. those are good traits. Yeah, very much so. so yeah, you, they're, they're, you don't have to talk to them and, and tell them things over and over. They're really good. They, they, 
they 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 have the answers a lot of times before I need to bring it up. They, you know, there's the, the veteran guys kind of know our system and know how we play, and so they have done a great job, kind of, you know, managing themselves a, a lot of times. You know, it, it's exam week this week. I haven't called Pat Holmes one time. I'm, I'm very confident that guys are handling their business. You know, I checked in with them yesterday, and hey, they're stressed and all, but. This is a group that has handled its business off the court and on the court. That's why it's so fun to be around them on a daily basis. Yeah, and regardless of basketball, you can probably see success stories going on. No, no question. These guys are highly motivated guys. Again, they get so down on themselves when they don't achieve. I'm more kind of trying to keep them loose and say, hey, hey, on to the next play. Let's not dwell on it. And I think that will be the case throughout the season because they're really high achievers and hard on themselves. And it's a great dynamic to have, um, but I need to keep them, you know, hey, on to the next one. Let's on to the next one. Here we go. What's next for Matt Farrell? Well, well I hope he just – evolution and because mm -hmm. he seems to be getting better and doing a little bit more every game. Well, he's really confident, Tim. He's extremely confident that it's his team. You know, I think what he said after the game the other day, maybe you asked the question, Tom, in New Jersey, it's, it's his team now. And, and, and I think uh, with what he's done early, um, he's extremely confident that he's at the controls and his teammates know it's his show. And, you know, it's been interesting to see he and I's relationship grow now. You know, that was kind of Demetrius and I last year and then Jaron and I the year before. And so he and I have really – you know, started to talk more about the game and sets and what do you think about that? And, and, and um, I'm learning a little more of his insights about our team. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't, he doesn't need to change much, you know, to keep doing what he's doing and pushing it in transition has helped us. You talk about his confidence. I mean, do you feel, is there any need to rein him in at all or are you just letting him? Well, I, I think we need to let him rip. You know, I think he, he's got to be a guy that's in attack frame of mind and, and um, you're going to live maybe with a turnover or two. We need him playing downhill for us. I want him confidently rising up and taking his shot. He's a great shooter. And, um, you know, so I think right now I, I just I want him kind of going for it. Is, is he good, his ankle and everything? We held him out yesterday. It was kind of, it's kind of a tendon above the ankle that he twisted in the game. We just held him out yesterday to get him another day of rest. He'll be full barrel today. He should be fine by game time. Thanks, gang. Thanks, Mike. See you Saturday.